Hey Geeks, Tim with MajorGeeks.com. Today we're going to try and show you how to make older apps compatible with Windows 10. In other words, anything that was created before Windows 10 no longer updated and it won't work for whatever reason. There's a million variables here, but we're going to simplify it. All right, first thing you need to know if you don't is where the program executable is. You're going to need to know this for both of these steps. So the easiest way to do that, let's use Firefox for an example. If I right-click on that, and I click on open file location, it is going to open the folder with the executable highlighted. Watch. There it is. So Firefox EXE, and there's the folder. You know right where you want to go. So we want to know how to do that. First thing you want to do is try a troubleshoot compatibility. So let's do a right click on the executable and do troubleshoot compatibility. It may not work as well here, it's Firefox. As you can see, you could try recommended settings, so go ahead and try that. Again, remember, there could be multiple steps to get your program running here. Or troubleshoot, which will allow you to choose problems that you may have, so that's a nice one too. So you can pick whatever you see. Obviously, in this case, it worked, and now it won't run, it's a good one. Don't see your problem listed. What version of Windows did you have before that it did work on? Let's say, just for fun. There you go. So it switched to compatibility mode for Windows 7 and made sure it ran as administrator. So now you can actually click test. And as you can see, it's at the user account control. And there's Firefox. There you have it. And as you can see, there's a problem fix. Save your settings. You might need those later. Try the other settings or report the problem to Microsoft, though I don't know if that's helped. What if we check online? What's that do? Because again, that's something else I wanted to mention. What you might want to do is search for the name of the program in Google, for example, the name of the application and what problem you're having. Because somewhere in a forum somewhere, you're probably not the first person to have a problem. And maybe you can find a workaround or more importantly, a specific workaround as you're about to see. So, now that we've finished all of that, we have compatibility settings. This is time consuming and it takes a lot of guesswork, which is why you may want to just stop in Google and see somebody tell you which settings to use. Let me show you. So, hopefully, the troubleshooter found the problem. If not, we've got to start guessing. So, once again, we are going to right click on the executable. And this time we're going to click properties right down here. Here's your compatibility tab. Go ahead and click on that. As you can see, the link to the compatibility troubleshooter is here as well. Here's where we want to get started. Compatibility mode. If you check this box, you can choose Windows 7, 8, two service packs of Vista and Vista. So if you know where it ran, once again, as we showed you earlier, go ahead and try that. Here's where it gets a little bit weirder. If you think it's a problem with your graphics card, you may or may not have an option. As you can see, it's not doing it here. Reduce color mode and pick a color. Run in 640 by 40 if it's a really old gamer application. Maybe it can't run full screen on your new computer. Disable full screen optimizations. Run as administrator. Register it for restart. ICC legacy display, ICC color management. I'd have to Google that one to be honest with you. Off the top of my head, I don't remember what ICC is. So here's where we have the problem. Which one do you use? I don't know. I start with compatibility mode, and I would probably leave it on through most of it. Once you find out that doesn't work, go to the color mode. Try one of these two. And just keep working your way down the list and keep trying the program until you find the combination. A lot of fun, right? There's also change high DPI settings. This could help with scaling problems you can see here. And if you have this option, you can use the DPI. I think you click this, and there it goes. So if that's checked, use the DPI to set for my main display when I open the program or I sign into Windows. You might want to try, I open this program. And high DPI scaling override. Now we could spend another 10 minutes in here explaining DPI scaling and all that. I don't think you care. You just want to get your program working. Once again, try that with that. and then try that. There's only three settings in here, but get to these last after you try the other stuff. 
So once again, just plan on spending a few minutes with it. And again, if all else fails, you might be able to find a workaround somewhere on the internet. There's nothing fun about trying to get an app to work that's an older app when all of a sudden you have, you know, brand new video cards, widescreen monitors, all this stuff going on, and these programs just don't run. So there you have it. Those are pretty much the way you can do it through Windows. But feel free to check the video description. There's a little eye up here, or there should be, uh, I'll put a link in the video description. If you want to follow along at home, I know I go a little bit fast sometimes. Obviously, we didn't do all this. I'm at five and a half minutes. You couldn't do all this in five and a half minutes, probably. Not testing. Checking, testing, checking, testing. You wouldn't be able to do it. So you can follow along in the page, and I'll have the video embedded right up here by the time you see this page. And then you can do both. You can follow the video, hit pause, check the screenshots, because there is a good bit of test and trial and error to get this to work right. So I hope we helped you out. Bottom right hand corner, you click subscribe if we did. Click like if we helped you out. Thanks for watching as always. We appreciate you. See ya.